Hello and welcome back to Where Are All My Friends. I'm your host, Andrew Cram, and this week's episode is a good old-fashioned artist interview with 44 Blonde. And this episode was bound to happen. We had a lot of mutual friends, he's been on my radar for a while now, but in all reality, his project is just now starting to take off. And I love doing episodes at this time point in an artist's career because it's this special moment where it's all starting to click and we can talk about it in real time but in all reality, I believe it's only up from here, but we'll always have this little moment where we captured this. So in this episode, we talk about how he got his start, how he came out to LA and aligned with Lil Aaron, who is somebody that I have so much respect for. He does so much for the music scene in the community. And I, I just can't speak highly enough of him. So 44 Blonde's story ties into his quite a lot. We talk about that. But then we also talk about, from 44 Blonde's perspective, what he did as an artist from St. Louis to then kind of get out to Los Angeles and align with the right people and where he got stuck in his career and what he did to fix it. And I think that's valuable for anybody. And I think we all kind of feel that. So for all those reasons, I thought it was a great episode. Let's get right into it. Where are all my friends? 44 Blonde. I'm I'm hype on this one because you're you're an artist that I don't, we have a lot of mutual friends. And I heard of you, I think probably through Fish originally, mm -hmm. and then probably Lil Aaron. And then it was like a staggering chain of events of, oh, more, 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 more. And then I, I took the time to properly listen to the music and I was like, oh, shit. OK, <laughs> I see you. So I'm genuinely excited to have you on and I really want to hear about your story. And I'm, I would imagine we're going to have a lot of moments in this where it's like, oh, wait, you know this or this, this, this. So right. thank you for being here. I'm, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. So uh, typically the way I start it is if anybody doesn't know who you are, just a quick explanation of who you are and what you do. So yeah, my name's Ethan, 44 Blonde. Uh, I just graduated college, moved out here, uh, signed a record deal with um, with Tag uh, yeah. and, and Lil Aaron. Yep. And um, just make music, have fun, you know, make music about having fun. That's about it. Dude, so. that, that says it well. And already just off of Tag and Lil Aaron is mm -hmm. again, more mutual friends. But I'm curious, like what was life before you got to LA? Like how early did you know you were going to do the music thing? I mean, I've, I've been playing guitar since I was like eight, but then I kind of held off on that once I got to college and, and just kind of, I, I started trying to get like internships. I was in the business school, this and that. And, and then I, uh, I got back into writing, writing more music. Um, cause I met uh, this really cool producer in college, uh, his name's Reed, and we actually ended up making She Loves Drugs, which was my first single um, together. But that was kind of like, after I dropped that and got a lot of good response, it kind of felt like, okay, this is like, it could, it, this could happen, like this is, is fun, so yeah. Did you say where you grew up? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis. Oh, yeah. no way. Yeah. Whoa, okay, so then there's maybe even more weird mutual friends. There is a special scene out in St. Louis that I have observed from the outside looking in, but you would, I guess you would say the, the forefront of that would be like Dylan Brady. Yeah. But then there's a lot of people around that, like Ravenna Golden and Pretty and a lot of other producers and a really yeah. special sound. Were you around that? So Dylan actually went to my high school. No fucking way. But he's, I, I want to say, four or five years older than me. Uh -huh. So like I was going into high school when he was graduating. Yeah. Um, but I know like some of my buddies, older older brothers were like friends with him. Yeah, no, I mean, he was he was like making Night Lavelles. Like he was working with Night Lavelle whenever I was in high school. And we were like, who is this? It's so sick. Like, Yeah. You know, so holy fuck that's crazy it's it's weird uh to observe certain pockets of of areas right i was gonna say the u.s but it's everywhere right but like certain sp like cities and whatnot where you're like wait a minute there's like a lot of really special music coming from this one spot and i i honestly couldn't explain why but hearing that you're yeah. from st louis i'm like huh yeah. like like there's just like a makes sense yeah and i couldn't even say why yeah and and dylan like uh, he's in the hundred gex with uh with Laura and she actually went to like the rival high school. No mine, fucking way. Yeah, which is like down the road. And then um Dylan actually also produced drugs by Aaron. So it's like this whole just like kind of web of like I didn't know Dylan produced drugs. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. He he's been behind a lot of like some of my favorite stuff. That's that's definitely a person I've respect for. But yeah, he's great. Yeah. Cool. So you were studying business, you were in college. Were you always playing music throughout that? Like was it always something that you loved? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I even had a project before, but it was more like, 
poppy stuff kind of it was, it was more just trying to like fit in with I, what i thought was gonna like do well rather yeah. than what i like wanted to do what i thought would sound good um, yeah yeah i mean in the back of my mind i always loved doing it i loved like putting out songs and and promoting it and and getting these people to come at me and like give me feedback about whatever at the end of the day like i i ended up taking quite a long break after i want to say when i was like 19 or 20 i was just like this is like at this point, it's just turning into a, a hobby because of nothing was coming of it. I was kind of hitting this brick wall, wow. and uh, and then eventually, I was like, I was like, I can't like not do it. You know, I would just like there was nothing else that like filled my time. It was, yeah, like, fun. You know, so okay. But I'm obsessed with this exact moment because like that brick wall that you talk about. Mm -hmm. I think everybody runs into that, and it's extremely discouraging. And like in the moment, you're just like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Yeah. So like what like what did that feel like and what was that turning point or was there like specific things that you did or like how did that unfold because I'm obsessed with hearing about that yeah. exact moment. So I mean it was like definitely one song I put out um in this little band I was in and I mean the response was just insane but it was to this very small little market and I couldn't seem to like break out of that. I mean like we were going to like every party in st louis we were going like vip and clubs at 19 because of this song like it was fun we were we were shooting music videos on roofs that we were technically like very much not supposed to be on downtown like but no one knew about it like i didn't have that extra push that i needed from yeah. like a label or something like that but you could feel it there was a tangible energy it. of this is different from the other stuff and there is a proper response yeah i could feel it and like i would i was putting no money into like a budget i didn't mm. i didn't have any money to put in yeah. a budget but I was like, if I can do this with no budget and, and getting this kind of response, like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And that's why I was like, yeah, like I, I, I got very discouraged and I was like, like, I just can't, can't keep doing this. Can't keep running in a circle when like, I can see like these numbers, these, these results, this feedback. But at the end of the day, like it, it doesn't matter. Like I'm not, I'm not really gaining anything at the end of the day. So damn what a weird time because like yeah. there you are like seeing success and then you're like okay but what happens looking back i think it's i was doing stuff that was in such an oversaturated market to where it was very hard to like stand out whereas now i kind of just rather than trying to appeal to whoever i just like literally just go live life and sing about it and write songs about it and and i mean people seem to like that a little bit more and it stands out more because i mean everyone has their own story to tell so it's so, almost like by doing less it that's the thing that clicked like yeah doing less just frying so hard honest that, and, yeah. and and walking this line of like this this fine line of of not not lying but exaggerating the truth enough to like entertain people which yeah. is i mean it entertains me like I, I i look back i listen to these songs i'm like yeah like that that was that was a good time but in, in reality i mean it, may not have been that yeah crazy, you know <laughs> it's funny i always get shit from my friends because i'm so far from a lyrics person but mm -hmm. your late your last single that you dropped like just recently was should have stayed home right right and like even that one like you listen to it and you're like yeah i feel it like <laughs> you do a very good job as an artist telling stories and Appreciate for somebody that. that doesn't hear lyrics i mean that is a very high compliment because if it comes through yeah. then i'm like all right well yeah oh, i appreciate that a lot yeah, yeah. i used to um, sit down in my basement with my dad and listen to Bob Dylan records till three in the morning and like he would make me dissect these records and, oh, and wow. like and tell me like him what the lyrics meant and stuff like this was years and years of me growing up doing this so like that, that I really appreciate that compliment wow that's cool okay so that actually answers another question like music was in your family and it's something that like even around your father and growing up like you had good influence on proper music yeah yeah I mean I wouldn't say like the stuff I make now is is influenced as by much Bob by <laughs> Bob Dylan and 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 Tom Petty and the Allman Brothers like that's what I grew up on like Southern Rock and, and some folk music and and stuff like that but I just try to like you know and merge like my my own voice I, I feel like has a different character than a lot of what this genre has which is probably just because I, I, I never learned actually how to sing I just bought a bunch of Otis Redding CDs and, and, and tried to mock <laughs> mimic them growing up yeah and, and that's why like my talking voice doesn't even sound the same as my singing voice it's right like, yeah. yeah as we're sitting down and talking like i'm like kind of hearing that i'm like that's fucking crazy it's yeah. so different yeah um but yeah that, that's that's really interesting to me and that's another part of music in this day and age that i love is like 
there's not cred. It's not like, oh, well, you listened to this when you were growing up, so it's whack. Now it's like, oh my God, that's sick that you drew inspiration yeah. from this thing that I never would have expected. Like, yeah. I love how there's not really genres right now and how inspo from anything is just cool. And that, I, that scared me, to be honest. Really? Like, coming out here and like meeting up with Aaron and like all these people. And I was like, I don't, I don't know like the same type of music as you to the extent you do. Mm hmm. And I didn't want to come out here and, and just be seen as like this, like, I don't know anything type person. But yeah. I mean, I think the first or second day I ever hung out with Aaron, he told me I should do a, a Tom Petty cover for my project. So like, yeah, he grew up in Indiana. So yeah. I fucking love him. Yeah. Okay. Well, take me up to that part of the story because I have an unreal amount of respect for Lil Aaron. I think uh, I did a podcast with him and I think that's something that people might get wrong about him is if you only saw internet him, you'd maybe mm -hmm. think that he was like some internet cool kid that was too cool for everyone and thinks right. he's awesome. And it's like kind of a bit and he's like the yeah. kindest person ever. Oh, and yeah. I think he's done something so special for upcoming artists in LA is like he will take anyone in and like fucking house people and write with them and connect them to anyone like he is such an important part of this music scene in the best way and you mm -hmm. are a part of that story right? right so how what is your story coming out to Los Angeles what's that look like uh, well yeah no Aaron Aaron's great I mean he's kind of a, a blessing in disguise for me like I yeah. said I hit that wall and he came in like a savior to be honest oh my god so he was like that next piece yeah basically oh shit yeah. it was funny though I had made the song she loves drugs uh -huh. kind of like after hearing his song drugs like, I love that song I want to make something like that I sent it to him hoping that he would see it and listen to it uh, I didn't get any reply and then I sent him one night I was I was fucked up and I sent him a BDSM meme because I was like I was seeing his stories I was like this dude will love this and within 20 minutes we're on FaceTime he's like <laughs> loving the song and like, it was so funny and then a week later like I was talking to him and Gabe and I had a flight out here and so yeah it was that's the oh, weirdest wow. like Hopefully people will start sending more BDS yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the key. That's yeah, all you need. That's all you need. <laughs> and it's funny though, like I think in that is maybe the lesson of people are people and like yeah. everybody appreciates fucking humor and just being real and all that. So yeah. instead of the like, put me on, here's a song, just being like, here's some stupid shit. And like, you know, yeah, and I didn't expect anything of it. I was just like, this is hilarious. And and the biggest thing is he has definitely been like the first person coming out here just realizing that like everyone is just a person like it they're just they're all nice they're not this huge like celebrity that's gonna like shun you for talking to them like they're all so genuine out here and and i love it out here and yeah, yeah. damn that's really cool so how long ago was that first trip out when you when that you came here? was last may i want to say so yeah. not that long no about a year ago wow yeah because I feel like a lot has happened for you like in that yeah. like last year and a lot kind of clicked, huh? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it was it was definitely a snowball effect of things like the moment I got out here. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you think I, I've noticed this in other podcasts that I've done and I'm curious what your experience or take on it is, but I think that uh you have to be receptive to those moments and opportunities and also like the full send right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of people could have had that like, oh, I connected with, it doesn't have to be Aaron, but like just right. X person on the internet and there's a chance to go out and do this thing. And it's a little uncomfortable and you don't know the people. It could be socially awkward. And a lot of people maybe don't do it. But then even if you do it, I think there's something to like the full send. Yeah. Like the like, all right, here we fucking go. Like yeah. I'm going to go commit to this. Like yeah. Did you experience that when you came out here? Were you ready for full send artist project? Or well, what were your thoughts? Yeah. yeah, it was biggest thing was i i got uh them on the phone they're they're wanting me to f like come out here take a trip and my mind is just racing like what am i going to tell my parents mm. my parents i mean they were they're supportive now yeah but i mean they were like they were stoked i was looking for internships and, and full-time jobs so i was like right it was a very I, different narrative very it was like very you different. about to graduate college and you're studying right. business they'd and, gone yeah. 21 years of expecting me to to work a nine to five and right then, and then overnight i was i was telling them like yeah like i'm going out here like i'm i'm going in the summer so it's not gonna like change yeah. anything with school this and that like and they were like all right and so i came out here and yeah it was just I, I kind of just had that head first mentality the moment I got out of here. I was like, yeah, I just want to dive into anything and everything I can, especially because okay. I only had four or five days the first time I was out here. Yeah. So I was like, 
I'm, I'm, I'm just doing everything I possibly can, meeting as many people as I can. And, and I keep, even now, like I'm, I'm living out here and I still try to do that just because I, I never want to stop, you know, I yeah. just want to keep going. God, I love that. In that, in that four or five day trip, like was, that was your first time coming to Los Angeles? First time. Yeah. I'm not an artist and I remember my first time coming here, but like coming here, meeting Aaron, was it like, was that like a trip out of a movie? Like, was it fucking crazy or like, what did you do? Was it studios? Was it parties? Like what, what did that look like? That trip, it was honestly all studio sessions. Yeah. Yeah. I showed up and actually the first day I got there, we went to a little Lotus um, yeah. music video. Yeah. That you're shooting. And I was like, oh, this is sick. It was like in a motel. And I was like, it's like, this is it's weird. Yeah. It was just like every day, like two sessions a day. And like, I think we, I want to say, yeah, we had three set, three days worth of sessions, made five songs total. And like every song I was just like in love with. And I was like, yeah, this is like it. Wow. Yeah. Who were you writing with or, or like what were there early names there that connected that have ended up being people that have still stayed in your career? Yeah. I mean, like um, I'm still trying to work with as many like producers and this and that as possible. Um, it was cool because a lot of those people that were people Aaron hooked up, I would have never been able to get in rooms with like John Feldman and like uh, Drew Folk and and all these people that that are I mean big names. And this is the first time I'm out here, and I'm just kind of like nervous yeah. and, and shocked. And and yeah, I mean, fucking um, Aaron. So yeah, <laughs> this ends up just being the the. Aaron appreciation episode <laughs> literally yeah I mean oh, I'm very fuck. appreciative of what he's done for me so yeah that's no it's really cool to hear because I wanted to hear your story and I didn't know how much he played into it and yeah. you know like I've, I've said this from very early on of how much I respect what he does for the culture but you are a true testament to that um, back to you though with writing and showing up and doing all that another thing that I'm not an artist I don't know but mm -hmm. I think that a lot of times you can be the artist that writes in your bedroom, self-produces from any city. Then you show up and you write with names like that, that you just said, that's crazy. Like, did you, was that nerve wracking or were you able to just turn something on in your head and be like, all right, here we fucking go. Like it's game time. Like, I think that I'm the reason I yeah. asked that is I want to share things on this podcast that other people would relate to. Right. And I think that every artist has that moment where it's yeah. like, oh fuck, I'm writing with like a proper name now. Like right. how did you cope with that? How did you how did you adapt or jump in? Yeah, I mean, I didn't I don't even produce my own stuff. Like I I was like it was either with my buddy Reed or I was like like writing over like type beats on YouTube. Sure. You know? Yeah. And yeah. and and so coming out here, I was like I I didn't I wouldn't I kind of just thought of it as like, this is an opportunity for me to come in with an idea and have people just like make it for me. Like this mm. is kind of always what I wanted. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're I, much more an artist and songwriter than you are like a producer. Right. Yeah. And I was like, I'd write these songs even just like over an acoustic guitar and then I wouldn't know what to do with them. So I was like, well, this is great. Like this, is, this connects <laughs> well, this like is the last piece for me to like make whatever I want. And yeah. so, no, it's awesome. And like, that's why I'm still trying to meet a bunch of new producers all the time and like, just kind of like see what clicks, you know, like I, I love writing different types of music, all that type of stuff. So it's, it's cool to get two different minds from coming from like the instrumental side of things to like the lyrical side of things and, yeah. and all that. And no, it's, it's, I love it. Yeah. That's no, that's really cool to hear. I, I like that a lot because I'm, I've always been uh, interested in those moments because everybody mm. like, regardless if you're a songwriter or whatever, everybody kind of has those moments where you like, you show up and get that chance and you're like, Oh shit, here we go. Yeah. So that's cool. Do you think um, like the reality of that was that like, was everyone pretty welcoming? Like, was it pretty easy for you? Did you have enough ammo and songs in mind where then you sit down and you're like, oh, this isn't that bad? Like, we're just riffing like anyone else I would work with. Yeah, I mean, yeah. everyone was great. They were yeah. all so nice. They still are to this day. I will say also, like, another Aaron appreciation is, I mean, he's probably the best songwriter I've ever met. Yeah. And so we'd go in these rooms and, and write two songs a day, five hours total or something we'd, we'd crank them out that fast wow. and, and like one of the songs we wrote in 20 minutes like, wow yeah. dude sometimes those are the ones though like if you yeah. overthink it you're doing nothing toward like for yeah it. no like, exactly and, yeah. and and you're like laughing at the end you're like man this is just so good like it's yeah it's so fun so yeah all just based on who you're, who, you're, who you're working with and when you go in there and and everyone everyone made me feel comfortable so it was great yeah that's fucking cool wow so that trip happens incredible trip 
go back home, how much longer then does it take for you to be like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna truly full send it and come out here? Well, I I feel like I like to finish things that I start, and so I Respect. went. I went back to uh, finish my senior year of college. Wow. Um, and I I felt like also all the pieces weren't fully together yet for me to just come out here and 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 dive head first. I still like. In the back of my mind, love a little security to know like things are gonna end up all right regardless. So uh, yeah, I finished my last year of school, but I was coming out here probably once every two months or so. Oh, okay. So yeah, and, and I'd spend a week out here and and um, just keep working on because also I'd signed that deal and I was working on a um, a whole project. So I was like, well, yeah. I, I'd love if this project was done by the time I got out here. That'd be great. Um, which That'd be great. <laughs> the thing is, is I kept making songs that, that like were better than the last. Right. So like you decide. keep writing and you're like, well, fuck that one. Now yeah. I'm in love with this one. Right. Yeah. I have so many I love now. And so it's like, yeah, eventually I was just like, well, I was, I was out here for all my spring break and I was like, yeah, this is like, this is great. Like I finally, after coming out here, I finally could just figure out things to do on my own and like sessions to get in on my own. I didn't have to like rely on anybody. I felt comfortable with doing anything really. And yeah. so I was like, well, this is, it feels natural now. Yeah. And so that was when I was like, yeah, okay. Like I'm, I'm definitely ready to come out here. And two, three months later, I'm, I'm here. So fucking yeah. crazy, dude. So crazy. Yeah. Another thing that I love is I, I love talking to artists early in the journey, right? Like this podcast, I've had the chance to talk to a whole lot of people at different phases in the career. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I never want to do is have somebody come on and be like, you fucking made it. Like talk about how awesome. Like it's very right. real. It's cool that it's like so early in your journey, honestly. Yeah. Like you've had this early success and it's continuing, but like you just released a single a couple weeks ago. Like you really, mm -hmm. you can feel that yeah. It's kind of just the beginning. Yeah, no, I released a song a couple of days ago. Oh shit! Yeah, wow. <laughs> it was that was the first single. Yeah, and yeah. So it's like brand new. Yeah, and I'm just I'm just happy to be here. God, <laughs> yeah, just, I love that. I'm just stoked. Yeah, but okay. So then, my question for that, like, when we look at it as that type of project, and here you are, and it's such like an in real time thing. I love for the podcast to be a chance to kind of be like a time capsule, right? Because there's, Definitely. it's like, this is this moment yeah. and it's only going to go up and it's only going to evolve. Right. So like right now in this moment, as we sit down and record it, I think it's the end of June. Yeah. It's not July yet. It'll probably be July yeah. when this comes out. <laughs> but like, what are you focused on right now? Like, what are you stoked on right now as far as the project goes? And right well, I now, guess just life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now I'm, I'm just pumped that i just dropped my first single um should have stayed home and yeah then, and then got another one coming out in four or five weeks that i haven't announced yet mm -hmm. and uh yeah i mean just like excited to like put out a project and 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 show the world that like i can i can do this like this whole thing and people i don't i don't even know how to explain it i'm just yeah. like stoked it's, you know <laughs> yeah like it's like this is the time like, yeah finally let i don't even know to what to expect time. really yeah I'm just going with it that's crazy. Another another part of uh, this that I love so much is thinking about lessons learned and and the whole journey. And again, it's still so early. But as you look back on all of it now, is there anything like the advice to the artist that relates to you or that like feels like there's something special. Like, mm -hmm. I guess like St. Louis you, where you have the one song and you're like, people care. Right. But what do I do? Like now that you're a little bit further along in the journey and you figured yeah. out a couple of the steps, what do you tell to a version of that artist? That's a good question. I mean, if you really believe in something, I mean, definitely like full send it like you were saying with it. Like, but I think song wise, I'm talking like if, if you have a song that you really believe in, maybe like find the people to, that you that you need to hear it before you put it out. There's a couple songs that I have that I think if I would have had them done just slightly different here or there or like had certain people hear it. I mean, you never know. Like it could have been even bigger than it is now. Whoa. And I was just talking to somebody else about that yesterday. I was like, All right, like there's a song um that i've put out that i was like i want to put this on my my project but it's already out like i don't know if i can do that and so like i wish that i could have like kind of waited and compiled like a certain amount of stuff that i was proud of and then and then 
somehow got that in the hands of certain people and and just not i was never really scared to reach out to people but that's a good piece of advice definitely is just reach out to whoever like i mean who cares what's the worst they're gonna say is no or whatever like yeah and then you i mean whatever you move on like who cares it's completely but what i'm hearing in that even past what you're saying like i agree with all that but I'm almost like, damn, you were pretty strategic about knowing who you wanted to hear your music. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Was that uh, was that planned or was that you just being like, all right, I see this dude, Aaron, who's doing all these things. I like what he's writing. I'm inspired by his songs. So I want him to hear it. Or did you go further in that? Like, did you see other producers that were aligned with stuff? Because I think that there is a lot of strategy there that's good. There is, but I, I don't think I thought that way through No it. shit. I was just kind of like, oh, like, I just want to, like, basically, I, I kind of played a game with Instagram with when they started having the mutual things where they'd show. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I would just, like, kind of play the, like, I'd follow a couple of people here that I knew, like, knew someone else. Mm. And then, like, we'd become mutuals. And then it became, like, this whole chain of events. And then, like, suddenly, suddenly someone would follow, or, like, I'd follow them. And they'd be like, oh, you know, like, 90 of my friends. And I'd be like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pause. Like we've yeah. met. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. And well, that's Aaron gave me the best piece of advice I've ever heard is it, it's that the internet is not real. It's all just a big game. Like you don't you just play it like a big game and don't get your feelings hurt over it and and things will go a lot better for you. Cuz I was I used to care about like how many likes I was getting, like who was viewing my stories and he was like, "Dude, like the internet is not real." Like just who cares? And so just do whatever you want. And since then, I mean, I've just been, it's been a blast, you know? Elaborate on that because I love that so much. Yeah. And I, like, <laughs> damn it, do I love that? But like, tell me, dig further into that. Like, what were you getting caught up on? What was, what was fucking you up? Mm-hmm. And like, what did you specifically change? Because again, I, I love to like dig into yeah. these little things. I mean, it used to be just like, I was getting caught up on like, I'd meet someone or or like I idolize someone they her, them and I would become mutual friends on on Instagram or whatever yeah. and then or they would message me and and suddenly like they'd unfollow me or they'd ghost me and I uh, I felt personally like, like yeah. but I was like then I I was talking to Aaron about it and he was like dude who cares right and 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 it took me a little bit to like really like realize that but now it's like yeah like I mean, if if someone messages me and I forget to reply or or I don't want to reply, like I hope I hope they just don't care, you know? Like, right. It, it goes two ways. Like, yeah. I can do that. You can do the same thing to me. Like, I, it's all good. Like, yeah. Like, like I don't. No one has the time for for that. It's, it's, right. It's all just yeah. yeah. I like that a lot, and I, I think that that is such a great mindset to have with it because. It's so true. Like if you yeah. take that for yourself, like fuck, how many DMs are there that you can't get to and respond to? Yeah. Does that mean you have a personal vendetta or beef right. with any of those people? Like, no, you're just fucking busy. Yeah. So like to take that and apply it advice to yourself, to yeah. just be like, this isn't personal. Like it doesn't matter. It's a game. Not at all. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. That's that's a good piece of advice that yeah. people should definitely because the internet's ruining everyone. So. Dude, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy how much that just gets talked about, like amongst any type of creative, right? Yeah. Like, it's such a fucking huge piece of it. Yeah, yeah. So, but respect for having integrity as an artist and and being more than just internet. You know, right. that's like, I mean, in the time that we're talking right now, like if I were to just look at like Spotify numbers or anything like that, like it's to me, it's laughable the quality of your music and how good it is compared to numbers but i love that i love that yeah. you are more than just something on the internet i definitely used to get caught up on the numbers of stuff like that too and yeah now it's just like it'll happen you know like yeah it, i'll find my way it'll be all good what do you think is next uh past this project or oh, actually tell me about the project so the first single should have stayed home yeah just came out i mm-hmm. thought it was a couple of weeks ago it was a couple of days ago a couple of days ago Holy yeah. fuck. when will the full project come out uh, I think we're shooting for like early to mid fall. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We're just doing an EP. So yeah, I think it's going to be five, six songs on there. And Damn. So your head's probably just in that right now. Like if I ask basically. what's next past that, you're probably, I don't fucking know. Like, Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm hoping I put it out and, and maybe open up for someone on a tour. That'd be oh, cool to yeah. like kind of push the EP and, and just meet more people, get more fans around oh, around yeah, the country. Have you had the chance to play live proper? I opened for uh, Little Lotus at Gillies um, okay. in Dallas. What was that? 
last fall, I guess. Um, and then I'm actually playing Emo and I on Friday. This Yo! Friday. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, that'll be my first show out here. So I'm excited about that. Oh, shit. Are you going to, what's your setup? Are you going to go full band for that? Or like, how do you? Um, I'm having Tosh drum for me. Uh -huh. And then I'm having this guy, John, play guitar for me. And then I'm, I'm running some, some tracks behind because a lot of it is unreleased. And I don't want to, you know, really go go raw dogging it in there yeah so, <laughs> yeah i feel that and like ideally like if you were to tour because that's another thing that i almost forget to talk about because i i don't know i just like assume that everybody just goes and plays live and tours but with i mean everything the last couple of years people couldn't tour mm -hmm. and then so many projects are so new like that's probably a whole other piece of your career that you have yet to develop and that you're probably excited to do but yeah i mean i definitely get very anxious performing mm -hmm. but um I, I think it'd be a great opportunity to, to kind of like get over that because i'm doing it i would do it every day on tour and and i mean it, it sounds fun i, I want to get into it and just again just yeah. kind of dive into it and see what happens i think so. it's such a great place for an artist to like really get their reps in and like you just you yeah. have to level up you know That's, oh yeah that was grinding like, yeah right like that was my early days of I mean, I never played, but like mm -hmm. tour managing bands and being out on the road and the amount of confidence that that gave me and the amount of like, oh, nobody knows what they're doing, but like you can just go and own it and figure it out. Like, right. I, that's so cool when I talk to an artist like yourself that gotten this far and have perfected the product so much and still have yet to tour. Cause I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, fuck. Like it mm -hmm. only goes up from here. Yeah. Like, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. unless I'm somehow horrible at performing but i think yeah but right. like that's the best part about that is like it literally doesn't matter like that's one yeah. of those things that it is practice like if I'm you were to be the that. worst like you never have an artist that goes out and tours for a year and is like wow they still just suck like yeah. you're go it's it it's statistic right. you have to just be better <laughs> yeah, it's more fair. just like damn hope i nail it like yeah. hope you start off at a good right. spot yeah 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 no i'm 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 looking forward to see seeing what happens with that so yeah yeah fuck. That's yeah, if cool. anyone here just needs an opener, let me know. <laughs> Yo, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, thank you for taking the time to do it. Thank uh, you for having me. I mean, we talked about it and I always link it, but where can everybody find you? What are you focusing on? Um, I mean, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, yeah. TikTok, all yeah. the Yeah, you're yeah. doing it all. You're all doing it all. Game. Yeah. Yeah. My number is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh and it's just at 44 blonde. Uh Instagram is at it's 44 blonde like ITS 44 blonde and then the other two are just yeah 44 blonde yeah tight tight so, yeah. yeah and I'll link it all yeah bro thank you thank you bro this was great hell yeah much appreciated thank you so there you go 44 blonde story I'm really excited for him it's always fun to talk to artists in this time frame of their career and right in the moment of it all happening so definitely keep an eye on him i really do think that he has a very bright future as an artist and i legitimately love his music so go listen to it if you haven't already you can find him everywhere at 44 blonde or on instagram it's 44 blonde i'll link it all here anyway if you want to do me a massive favor and you like the podcast share it with friends that's the biggest most helpful thing you can do and it's so easy take this link wherever you watch or listen and just text it to a friend or share it on social or anything really does help. You can also rate and review the show if you haven't already. Spotify, Apple, leave five stars, YouTube, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help. Outside of that, let me know who you want to hear from. Give me feedback. I always love to hear it. And I'll be back next week with another episode.